You're listening to Artificium Occulte Venatores, a Shadowrun actual play podcast by Relative Dimension. So when last we met, you guys had returned to the Vatican, uh, turned over your stuff, got uh, a little bit of time off to rest. They didn't have anything immediately for you. So in looking for a job, I forget who it was, called up their Mm -hmm. fixer looking for a job. Marigold? Yep. And from there you were sent to the Pearl Tree, a uh, kind of a rather nice nightclub and met with Socrates, the troll, who offered you a job, in which case you would be breaking into a medical facility to steal a prototype autodoc and delivering it to another location, and they wanted you to make sure you were not... uh, that you did not get in and out without nobody noticing, because they wanted you to be chased. Hello, distraction run. Now, they don't necessarily want you identified, but they do want them to know that somebody stole something and to chase you. Uh, you were given two-week deadline. Monday morning it is supposed to go... Uh, they are supposed to go live with the project. You had uh, five days had passed already in training and planning. There was another... Four days to get some maps off. So I don't know. Who nine. Maps we had off. nine days left. We had nine days until the thirtieth, according to my notes that I took. That might be what that means then. Okay. Yeah. Because on the twenty-second, everybody's ammunition was ready, and they wanted to wait at least until then. The deadline for the job was the thirtieth. I just realized I should probably get on the table. That helps. Yes, May thirtieth. I was confused briefly because the calendar page is showing Monday as the start instead of Sunday. I need to fix that. I guess I cannot. All right. So, yeah, Monday the 30th was your deadline. So, technically, I guess, Saturday, Sunday night the 29th. The 22nd is when your ammunition came in. Um, okay. So, I, I did want to actually uh, go ahead and get these uh, the skills off for the... Um, or the active soft for, um, uh, what was it again? The, uh, general, or whatever it was. My, my brain isn't working. Hardware. Hardware. Thank you. That, that was it. And you can buy that just pay standard price? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Sure. Let's see. Wait, do I have enough for the standard price? That's the question. I should. Um, I, I found a weakness in, oh no, wait, here it is. It was a 10,000, let's, See, it was a 10,000 lump sum we were given for this, the advance? Yes. Yes. The, okay. the pay is negotiated total. Okay, I need, to, I need to write that down. Total, not each. Well, that'd be a nice job. Okay. Ooh, man, that's expensive. Yeah, I think he originally offered you 30,000. And I got it boosted to 45, I believe, right? Yeah. Yep. And that was 10K up front on top of the 45? No. That was okay. 10 of the 45. So, 10k advance, 35 on completion. Okay. Uh, normal price would be 15 grand. Uh, yeah, that that. Is that just a rating one? No, this, uh, that's a three. Okay, three, yeah. Uh, I can bring it down a notch. Two would be 10. Yeah, because it's five grand every rank. Every well, rating. hopefully you won't need it. Yeah. Fortunately, if we do, you can't edge it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah, it's based off logic, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. My logic's a four. Um, Six I mean, it's, all right. It's, yeah, and and I'm like, I'm thinking that you know, number one, this is a nice one to have because it's still it's still useful for other things. It's not so you know set, so it still wouldn't be a bad one to have either way, you know. So uh, all right, uh, I'll go with a rating two on it. That's ten grand. I I I have it. I can do that. And I trained two skills, just so you know. Okay. So besides shopping, was there any other legwork anybody wished to do? And or picking up your vehicle? 
Um, I believe we wanted to get maps off of the area because we are supposed to be, let's see, they're providing us with a place to lay low, but knowing routes and how to get there. Oh, and yeah. To shake the, uh, you know, how to shake the people that will be following us because that's a part of the plan. That is. I will definitely get a maps off for that. Yeah, that's, that's why we wanted maps off was to get a look of the area, find ways to you know, side streets, alleys, whatever we need to shake the tail um, once we... In case things go badly. <laughs> well, we also have to get to ground at some point, so we have to yes. shake the tail before that point, obviously. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, so I can... The, the map stops are actually really cheap, aren't they? I can tell. So, yeah. Uh, it's like the map stops are only 100. Is there... Can I put in like a title? What, what's the name of the city that this is going to be part of? Uh, let's see. We'll be going. We're stealing from Tivoli. We will. And you are delivering it to Frosinone. I mean, we've got nine days. Let's get let's let's get eyes on this place. Like it didn't have to be pulled off on the thirtieth. We could do it before if we're ready to go before. But I mean, let's get let's get some physical eyes on the place. See, see, I mean, we have good knowledge on what their forces, their uh, security forces are like, but let's get eyes on it. We're expecting a, a, a vehicle chase, right? Yes, there will be a vehicle chase afterwards because we are supposed so, to be noticed and followed. So we should plan out some uh, distractions and maybe uh, barriers along the way? No, we're supposed to be followed. That's that. Right. That is the plan. Right, but we want to slow them down, right? We don't want to actually get caught. Right. And so we right. want to arrange things like, uh, uh, you know, buses blocking the way or something like that. Okay, well, y'all do that planning, the then Marigold's going to get eyes on the place. Okay. Because breaking in is also part of our plan. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so oh I'm going God. to... Have a right. I will go through the the um the maps and kind of get an idea of two th- several things like heavy traffic areas and things like that that I would want to watch and be cautious for. Make two or three layers of of basically routes of things that would get me around without getting myself caught in some sort of dead end, you know. So probably several different options uh, to the end and to mark clear dead ends. Going no bad idea, do not go down this road, kind of thing. Also, um. Can I also do a do a quick look around to make sure there's not any construction or anything in these uh, routes? Because that, that would be bad and embarrassing. Yes, you can do that. Okay. From the Vatican, Tivoli is about, uh, what is this, 40 kilometers away. Oh, that's not too bad. So you can drive out in that area in a day. Um, yeah, if Marigold's going up there, I'll go with her to kind of get a, a better feel for the streets, too. That'll be a, a better thing for it. Um, how big of a vehicle are we talking about that we're driving here? Did they say? I can't remember what it was. They offered you either a bulldog, a step van equivalent, or like a gopher. Hmm. Ah, look at the stats on them. That's exactly what I was doing. Uh, let's see. Bulldog, step van... Ew, speed three, acceleration one. Uh, I think the gopher might have slightly better. The gopher's not much speed better. Speed four, acceleration two. And the gopher only seats three. Oh, so it's a bit more cramped is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah it's a pickup truck. Mm. But, well. like, that bugs me the way they do seating on the pickup trucks. Because, I mean, you can sit in the bed of a pickup truck with no problem. You can carry more than three in a pickup truck. Yeah, so I will go with her, and we'll uh, uh, we'll, I, we'll probably honestly, do the pickup truck, I, honestly. But yeah, I say take the gopher over the the bulldog. Uh, we are sacrificing a little bit of body and armor, but for more speed, more acceleration, and more handling, which yeah. I, is the important part that we need. Wait, that yeah. means we'll get to live if we wreck. <laughs> well, I mean, it's still body fourteen vehicle. Oh. Yeah, right. that, that'll still squish me. I also, I also, uh, and I we've also got the off road suspension on the gopher, though. Uh, that's always helpful, too. You never know when you have to go off road. Yeah. Um, all right. So, yeah, I will do a look around of how busy is this, this city? Is it like a fairly decent sized city? Is it just like a small town like the other places? Um, it's a fairly small town. Okay. It, uh, there is a river. 
that kind of runs up through it. So the main highway um, follows the river in a way. It is limited way in and out. Oh, so there's only so many exits out of there. Yes, there is. Um, the river kind of comes from the northeast, circles around a forest, uh, at which point the highway is on the north side of this. As the river curves up, the river then passes under the highway, and the highway kind of switch ba- switches back a little bit and then continues um, south and west to the south of the river. There are a few bridges for surface streets that will get you back and forth as well. So there are some surface streets that can take you out to the north, uh, to the south, and the west. The east is uh, more limited, but there's forest kind of east and north that you can get lost in if you wish to. Where is the building located? In what part of town? Uh, the building itself is um, near the river. It looks like they use the river for electrical power. So it's not too far from the river. Uh, you guys okay. are watching. How long are you guys going to spend surveying? Surveilling? Well, I imagine I will drop her off to surveil, and I'll do the city streets and then come her, come back around and get her Sounds while she's me. doing the surveillance. So all day, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, at least. Okay, so lose a day doing it. Yeah, yeah, we'll lose a day during the, during our little time, you know, at some point during uh, the wait for things and, and go in and, and do that. And that way I can, you know, feel the streets and see where any, you know, crazy potholes and stuff. And as well as things that might be blocking, you know, uh, things that we might be able to use uh, to our favor advantage and stuff like that while I'm doing a little drive around town. So for Asura, give me a driving test. And then any hits you generate with that, you can use as a teamwork bonus to a perception test. Ooh, nice. And for Marigold, give me... Mm-hmm. Do you have any type of knowledge on security protocols or procedures or things like that? I have security design. Okay. You can roll that, and any hits you generate can be used as a teamwork test on a perception. Oh, hooray. I can take one die. All right. <laughs> what did I say that was? Alright, so I got two. If only I could take more than one. Alright. Why, why can you only take four? Because I only have one rank in perception. Oh. <laughs> she don't look too good. I don't, and that's because I just bought up a rank in perception because I didn't have the skills at Jin. Alright. Ray skills E. I make up for it with gear. So do a perception with the bonus two dice for me? Yep. Uh, you want me to do make this visual? Yes. Okay. And I got four. Seven. I believe that should be ten dice. I got three. All right. So in your day of um, surveying the area, you notice that they do have um, a fence. It is stronger than chain link but it is not like a wall that goes around Uh, there is barbed wire along the top it is about 10 feet tall at most so three meters ish there are two gates where they have checkpoints Uh, one of them is for smaller vehicles and that seems to be where most of the employees come in and out of Uh, so a lot of small private vehicles doing that the other one, which is on the opposite side, so we'll say the private entrance or the small car entrance will be on the southwest side. And then on the northeast side is like the loading dock entrance, so it's a larger gate. Larger vehicles go in there, and that is where uh, the security vehicles pull into when they are doing shift change. A van pulls in. Let's see, did we have a numbers... At any given time, a dozen. So a van will pull in, and it looks like during shift change, eight of them arrive, and then eight leave. And there's also some that are off-duty, so there seems to be at least facilities for some to remain on-premises even after shift change. So maybe there's a bunk for a few emergency overnight type guards or a reserve backup the okay. checkpoints, the guards are, there's uh, two at the front. 
One, uh, they both kind of are inside a little shack. One of them will come out to um, basically check. It looks like he does a visual um, verification of the people coming in. So the guards at the gates look like they know the employees. So when they see them, they just kind of wave them through. And there's a gate that uh, has a bar that opens up. So when they pull open the main uh, metallic gate, which it does look like it can slide to shut for ad added security, but it's just a, one of the wooden bar arms. So they'll lift that up manually, it looks like, when an employee comes in or out. The one in the back is a bit more secure. They actually have rolling gates that will open up um, for the vehicle to come into. There is a an area that is a gate on either side, at which point guards will come in there, uh, check the backs of trucks if they have trucks. Uh, they look like they do mirror sweeps underneath a casual type of thing before they then open up the second gate to let the vehicle in or out. The security vehicles do not get that treatment. Okay. Uh, there are, you also notice during the day, uh, a few um, roto drones that do perimeter sweeps. And the guards uh, that you do see are lightly armed. It looks like they're wearing armored vests and um, they have sidearms. One of them looks like he is carrying an SMG. Okay, so we found that out already. Um, so uh, on the fence, uh, is there any sign of it being, like, electric? Not that you can tell. There's no signs that say it's electric. Uh, you don't notice anything accidentally bumping into it and getting shocked. Are there any visual cameras that we can see around the fence area? You're not looking. Okay. No, that oh. was my next question anyway. Oh, so. never mind. I'll be quiet. You're right. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah, you're, you're no, that was my next question anyway. Any, uh... There are cameras that you can see, yes. Okay. There are some on the corners of the buildings. Uh, the corners of the building that look out. There's um, a few in the parking structure, which is basically like a covered awning that stretches out for the cars. There's some there. And hold on. There are a few on the perimeters of the fence as well. Um, each corner, it's roughly squarish, and then midway between. And from looking, it doesn't look like it covers the entire thing. At least not at once. They do sweep. Um, it looks like they are on a regular pattern sweep from side to side. But they are also motion sensor. When something gets too close, they will... Um, halt on their progression, go back to whatever they notice. So either it's an automatic thing or somebody then manually turns it to investigate whatever is getting close before it resumes its sweep again. Hmm, let's see. Do I have... I and, can easily check and see if it's actually... Oh, but I don't think I have one. Damn. Okay. Sorry, and, I was thinking out loud. Asura, driving around, you notice the roads are in fairly decent condition. There are a few side streets in the residential areas that are not in the best condition, but most of the main roads around the place don't have huge potholes. There are a lot of winding roads. Mm. So that can, you know, make... Uh Make it very uh, slow moving. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. and it's heavily residential, not too far from this facility. There's uh, not too far from this the medical facility. There is a hospital. There's a few what look like uh, factories or industrial complexes, and then it's mostly residential, and that's where a lot of the winding roads are. You know, just spending some time driving around, you could easily get lost just in a small subdivision with the way the roads kind of circle around and rejoin each other and branch off. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. That um, sounds like we could use it to our advantage. That's possible. Yeah, I, there's I lots of places where you'll go in and you can turn left and then circle around to where you came in at to leave again or leave on a different end. Um, do some of them have like ex as the exits on the other side as well? Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, I'll primarily notate those because if they know the neighborhood, they may know there's no other way out. So that that would be trapping ourselves if we're not careful. Um, so uh, also, I will make note of uh, opportunities that go that could go off road if the truck can go off road. Um, but nothing too bumpy. I don't. I don't want to break the thing. You know, uh, just you know, simple off road. Nothing crazy. And in some of the residential districts, there's a lot of one way streets. Oh, fun. Okay, fair enough. Um, some of them, the ones that don't circle around, the ones that circle around are two ways and stuff. But there's some that you kind of go in in one direction, and it just keeps switching back and forth, progressing through the residential area in a set direction um, with some small side streets to get to houses that aren't on that main road. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a note of some of these. Um, as I said, what about like an off road? Is there, does it look like maybe an old dirt road that doesn't get used much, but it does actually lead out of town or anything like that, that I can find. Um, not really dirt roads. There are, um, Forested areas, wooded areas on the perimeter to the south, mostly south, slightly southeast, and north and northeast. But no real no roads go through them. There, Yeah, there's some roads that go through them, but they're paved. They're not really off-road. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay, okay. All right, all right. But those are more straight than I would imagine. Um, some of them are, I mean, not exactly straight, but they're not back and forth winding either. Not, not nearly as bad as the uh, the they, neighborhood. Yeah, they bend to the contour of the, the land. Okay, fair enough. Uh, which direction is the city that we're going back to, trying to get to? Southeast. So we'd normally want to go southeast, but I'd probably end up going northward and then just swinging back around. Yeah, from here, uh, the main highways that would go, you either go west until you reach one of the highways, um, probably about five to ten miles out that will then cut south, or you go northeast uh, about the same distance, maybe a little bit further before you then find one that cuts mostly back in the same direction, just slightly uh, to the side that pro- projects south and will eventually meet up with the first option, too. I see. I see. Um Damn it, I had a question that was actually pertinent. Right. Um, just to clarify, while we're working on this planning, uh, how far were they, were we supposed to keep their attention? Like, how far out? Were we just supposed to, like, were they supposed to follow us all the way to Frosnown? Or? It didn't say. Didn't specify. Okay. But not, I mean, obviously they don't want them being led all the way back to the, to the location that's right. Right. I mean, right. that sounds silly. Um, I'm just, I was just wondering if, you know, if we could plan on losing them in Tivoli and then making our way out or if they wanted them to get out of Tivoli. Yeah. But if we don't know, then I guess, I mean, it's whatever. I mean, could, we could clarify that if we wanted to and send a message to the to the Johnson if we wanted to do that. I, I just, you know, if that's yeah. something we should clarify. Yeah. Um, actually, it's a really good question. Um, I would I would actually. Yeah. Let's go ahead and send a message to uh, the Johnson and ask. How how much does he want us the one distracted? At what point do they want them lost, or or if ever? How much distraction do they really want them to have? <laughs> this is the question. You know, how long do you want them to follow us? Let me clarify that. That's probably a better answer. Uh, you get a message back that says, um, "As far as you feel comfortable, when you approach your destination, you are to send a message to somebody. He will meet you." Uh, and take possession of the truck, and um, you will then be responsible for finding your own way back. So if you wish to have them follow you to the destination point, at least make enough time for him to secure the truck. Uh, However, you would be dealing with them as well with the situation. Okay. All right, that makes sense. All right, so yeah, no, let's... there's no minimum distance, but if you do lead them to the spot, as long as you have a few minutes a, a leeway time, that is workable. Okay, 
That's fair. So, so it's not the end of the world if we don't lose them, uh, it, you know, getting out of Tivoli and, and, uh, and they're like following us on the highway, um, or whatever, but it's probably not the best either. We don't, we don't want to have to deal with them while we're trying to do the changeover. Okay. Correct. All right. I'll talk to, um, uh, to Marigold about that as like when I return to pick her up. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So. We can go as far as we want with the the cat and mouse chase, you know, uh, as long as we, you know, make sure that whoever we're doing the exchange with doesn't get caught in the the cat and mouse chase. Makes sense. So the question is, do we want to lose them before we leave this this city or lose them out in the highway somewhere or something like that, which is possible in every case? Probably right. be easier to lose them where it's congested. Or, I mean, on the winding residential roads could also be yeah. fairly simple to lose um, them. I, I do have a question. Along the highway, is there any large cities between here and the other city? Like a large enough city where I, you know, where it's congested enough to lose a, you know, lose a, a, a car? Or is there a rush hour? <laughs> yeah, if it's a small town, even a rush hour isn't probably that busy. That's the problem. Yes, there's a large city nearby. It's called Rome. <laughs> no, it's not me. I'm, I'm talking about in between. Between Frozenone and Tivoli. Yeah, is there any kind of large city or a medium city or anything like that in between? Um, there's not really large cities. There are small towns. It's uh, almost are, all small towns? Okay. Yeah. This place hasn't been affected by the sprawl that is typical in Shadowrun in America. Hmm. It still maintains a few isolated towns. Now, they're not tiny, tiny, but they're not huge cities either. Uh, depending on the road you take, if you take the north road and cut south, you have maybe three or four. If you take the south road out of Tiv- or the west west road out of Tivoli and then cut south, you have four or five on the way. Now, you can detour and do longer ways around and find more. What is the distance? Uh, i don't have this in my notes. What is the distance between or Tivoli and uh, Frosinone? Like how long? Like distance? Yeah. Uh, by fastest route, it's about seventy-eight kilometers. So maybe a little over an hour drive, depending on yeah. speed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. At normal traffic rates, and about an hour. Okay. Um. Fair enough. I doubt we'll be traveling at much. <laughs> Well, yeah. not so no, long as I we're mean, being pursued. If we're being pursued, it'll take us longer, I would imagine. So I would, I would grant us a good couple hours, uh, depending on on where we, what routes we take. Um, okay. Um, hmm, okay. God, we don't actually have a decker in this group. And this, uh, am I right to assume that we have Solomon only for church sanctioned uh, runs? Is he part of the church or part of like our group? Is my question, I guess. I don't know if anybody has ever asked. Marigold will send him a message and ask. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, with the whole camera setup they've got there, sounds like it would be, I mean, not all of us are B&E, but I mean, I guess I could go in and solo it. Uh, uh, if, if, I could, if I could find someone to look like, I could probably go in pretty easily. Uh, see, I was thinking just, uh, just... Scale, cut the fence. Well, well probably yeah, scale yeah. the fence. To you be sending a text message to him? Yeah, yeah. She'll send a text message to Solomon. Just, uh, just a quick hey first. Or hey, I got a question. That's it. Um, almost immediately, you get back a yes. Uh, let's see, Marigold. Straightforward, right? This will just be straightforward to the point. Uh, so, do you work for the church or are you with us? Because that's not a confusing question. Yeah, like, wait, what? <laughs> she knows like, what she means, damn it. <laughs> I'll probably think of it like both. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? You. Let's see. Is what, he going to call for clarification? <laughs> what is Marigold's. Uh, does she have any type of hardware or computer skill? No. And a logic of two. So. Okay. I know how to use my comlink for the what it was designed to do. Okay. So. And this probably Marigold gets a, an active comm signal. What do you mean? What do you and mean? And it's an voice. Active comm? Okay, yeah, okay, that's what he's doing. All right. Uh, 
All right. Uh, got a job, not ch- church sanctioned. Could use a Decker help. Um, in AR in front of you, his image appears. <laughs> what kind of job are we talking about? Uh, or simple, what kind of uh, help are we talking about? Uh, it's a simple, uh, oh dear God, I'm forgetting all my terms. Uh, it's not a day to steal. It's a simple B and E. Uh, snatch and grab. Snatch and grab, thank you. Uh, simple snatch and grab. Uh, the team always throws a hissy fit when I suggest going in solo for these type of jobs, and I don't think many of them could actually scale the fence or avoid the cameras, so. If Which one of us is the professional thief here? Because I keep on remembering the criminal terms. Get shush. All right. This was me out of character for getting terms. All right. But yeah. Uh. So yeah, just a bit of fucking with cameras. Uh. When would this be needed? Uh. We'll be doing it sometime in the next week. Just today was the physical recon. His uh, eyes kind of roll upward and look off to the side slightly. His image flickers momentarily. I could probably be of assistance. Cool. All right, I'll let you know the beats when I got them. Okay. Uh, anything I can start looking into now? Uh, well, the uh, she'll give him the details they have on the corp, the corporation they're hitting. Uh, I don't think we actually, out of character, got a name for the corporation. We just know it's. Or I didn't um, write it down. It just says steel prototype from medical equipment developer company. <laughs> but we're but we're, we're right there, so I'm assuming we have a name now. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I I assume we were given a name and just out of character, it hadn't been thought important because even the delivery location is rival medical company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, she'll give him, you know, give him the corp name. Uh, which if they have multiple, she'll give him, you know, which facility it is, so he can, I mean. Start figuring out. She doesn't know shit about the Matrix. You you know what you need. I don't. Um, you can mark it down. The uh, name of the company you are going to be stealing from is Lucky Hive Medical Facility. Or Lucky Hive Medical Technologies. That's a terrible name for a medical company. <laughs> the of the Shatterin world. I was going to say Hive? What? I don't like that term. Okay, anyway. Their mascot is like a happy bug spirit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> See, look, we're okay with stealing from this place now. Because, geez, who comes up with a name like that? And These guys the, are morons. The company you are delivering to is Phoenix Solutions. One I word, like one. no S. Okay, that's weird. I don't... Who thinks of these names? The fantasy name generator. <laughs> There's, like... I mean, no space makes sense, but put the S there and make it capital. It's just, it's, that's, the the Phoenix Solutions is weird. Anyway, but okay, so, yeah, she'll give him, you know, where Target's Lucky Hive Medical Technologies, the facility in Tivoli. I don't, I don't think she even in character knows how big the company is, but she'll specify it's the facility in uh, Tivoli. He nods. Got it. I'll, I'll start looking into it. Breaking and entering, uh... Avoiding cameras. All right. Yep. Uh, Maybe even parking ever... a car? No, we've got a car provided for us. Well, I mean, um, like the chase vehicles. Right, the chase vehicles are being... Oh, right. I, that was another question I have. I saw them coming... I, 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 let me talk around my tongue here for a second. Um, so we saw security vehicles during the shift change. Uh, were there any vehicles, like, on-site that would be used in a chase and, like, uh, what did I see those first of all? Because I'd like to know what's going to be chasing us. Um, there are many vehicles there. They do have covered parking a lot, and a lot of vehicles are parked there. So it's possible that any of those vehicles could be used in a chase. Um, you only know which ones showed up and which ones left when employees were showing up and leaving. So there were a lot of unaccounted vehicles that could have been people there before they, before you got there or leave after you left. There was only one, the security van that showed up for shift shift change was the only one that was obviously marked. Okay. What may, what model was that one? I'm going to assume they have just, if I work on assumptions that they might all be similar. Um, that van would be a, 
Um, a high performance passenger van. Okay. Um, she. Uh, sorry if I'm retconning a little bit, but she will. She would have taken a just a quick. I think I've got a few micro cameras, uh, or something in my glasses. Uh, would have taken a quick uh image of that. Uh, and likely sent it to her mechanic fixer, mechanic contact. And uh, so we know if that the vehicle, the type of vehicle that will be, you know, chasing us. How does it handle? How does it, you know, speeds and everything? Because, I mean, I don't know shit about vehicles, but I got a mechanic. <laughs> so uh, you would get back that it is um, in technical terms and not game me- make game mechanic terms. It mm. is Better than a gopher. Okay. Um, at least on highways. Off-road, it's probably the same or slightly under par with a gopher. Now, that is assuming an empty vehicle. If it's armored, it might be a little slower. If it's full, it might be able to match a gopher. Um, if it's armored and full, it might keep up pace with a stock step van. Okay. Um and just as a secondary question, uh, I'll I'll spin the two karma to grab a rank in automotive mechanic if you'd like. She's going to basically ask, how can if I get? Oh no, wait. Right. How can I frag with this van without completely disabling it? Basically, how can I slow it down? If I mean, if the opportunity arises, you know, might as well. As in, um, mechanically disable it. Well, I'm I'm not looking to disable it. Like she'll specify that, but I mean, just like uh, you know, slow it down. Aside from the obvious, you know, let some air out of the tires, or whatever. And is it? Well, I guess the important question was, is it possible? Um, like any vehicle, if you mess with the tires, you'll slow it down. Um, he says it's pretty rugged. It can handle, um, like flat tires for a ways, unless they're shredded. Um, it can drive through many uh, light armor uh, barrier obstructions, but if you park, you know, something heavy in front of it, it's not going to go through that. Um, if it's running wireless on the Matrix, you might be able to uh, interfere with its pilot program. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's like if you want some more permanent. Uh, ways of slowing it down, I might be able to find out some optimal targeting areas for um, projectiles. That would be great. I'll run it through simulations and see what I can come up with. Yep. How much I owe you? Um, He's only loyalty, too. If I come up with anything, well, I'll tell you then. For now, just lunch next time you see me. Sounds good. All right. Think. Let me go over my notes here for a second. I think that's probably all I had for the moment. All right. Is Ascalon doing anything? Is he back yet? Oh, he's AFK? All right. Is L doing anything? Uh, I put a note in chat. Ah, uh, hold on. I have to find chat and read it. Uh, I mean, I, I think we basically I, did that What with, uh, what, with Asura's driving around. And I'll be right back. But yeah, basically that... What you posted there is, I mean, exactly what we were doing with the physical recon. Yeah, were you driving with them, driving on your own, or just looking matrix-wise? Probably matrix-wise, searching city records, construction projects, upcoming city planning events, that sort of thing. Um, In your time frame, there's no construction coming up. Uh, big vehicles, there are a lot of smaller highways that big vehicles aren't allowed on because they are tighter turning. However, some of the larger highways in and out, some of the main roads, they can be blocked off with things like that. Um, I was using it as a relative term. A van could be a big vehicle for some, some streets. This is true. Uh, vans could block off some of the smaller side streets that do winding around. Some of them do have tight turns, uh, so something stopping right in the middle of that could mess with stuff. Uh, There are hills in the area, too, so it 
Let's see, at the end of May, it probably won't snow, but if you fabricate ice, that can be detrimental in some places because you do have hills and tight turns on hills. Like a tight turn at the bottom of a hill? On In some areas, yes. Uh, pick a couple out, do uh, some personal reconnaissance on them, um, and then see if uh, uh, one or two candidates stand out, and then discuss it with Asura. And this was in Tivoli itself, right? Doesn't have to be. I don't think we've really done much in First Unknown yet. Yeah, it would take a lot lot longer to research that type of thing on the way down there without knowing, uh, because there are multiple ways of getting down there. Well, we need to come up with some way to end it, right? Yeah, I believe a uh, suggested plan was lose them in the winding residential area of Tivoli. Are we um, planning on keeping the vehicle or, or trying to keep the vehicle? I don't think so. The plan is we meet up with the guy back in uh, Frosnown and hand over the vehicle and then go to ground, which they have in a, a safe house or something for us, according to my last notes. Oh, okay. So we're not planning on letting them actually catch it. We're planning on actually making a delivery, but they also follow us part at least part of the way. Yeah. I'm not quite sure why they need us. They, I, 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 It's not specified why they need to follow us, to be honest. And the tail, we just need to keep it as long as we feel comfortable. Like, there's no specified well, time or distance. The reason, the reason I ask is because I was under the impression it doesn't need to be in working condition. So um, just wrecking the prototype would complete the job. No. So we theoretically... No. Yes. So theoretically, we could crash the vehicle and the prototype and do something to make it almost unrecoverable. I, we're, I, we're stealing it to give it to a rival medical company. Like we're being hired by, hired by Phoenix Solutions to steal the prototype from Lucky Hive Medical Technologies and take it back to Phoenix Solutions. Am I, am I remembering that right? Yeah, out of character, Joe, didn't he mention yeah. that they don't need it to work? They don't need it to work. They still need to take possession of it. And and I believe since, like, because we called to talk to... Uh, okay, so again... Johnson, and he, specif- he did mention that we will meet the guy in Frosinone and hand over the vehicle. So I assume right. they want it back in working condition. Right, but again, uh, we could satisfy that requirement with some sort of crash or accident. I I don't see... I, I I rather don't like that plan because I'd rather not put our lives at risk. I I think getting caught is more of a risk. Nah, getting caught we can handle the guards. But a, but a dramatic accident we could easily fake. Well, as a as a recap of what they said, uh, they are going to provide you with a vehicle. They want the prototype. It doesn't have to be in working order. But when you get close to Frozen Own, you call a contact. He takes possession of the vehicle. Uh, you guys are then need to find your own way back. Um, if he doesn't take possession of the vehicle, then that's not being satisfied on that part of the job. So a dramatic crash and leaving it there in the wreckage is not satisfying the job. No, no. I mean, we can go further than that. I mean, like, uh, okay, picture an accident where the car ends up, like, in a canal or something like that, where they can't get to it right away. And then we have a salvage truck quote unquote, conveniently roll up and start hauling the truck out and loading it on the salvage truck. And if they try to take possession of it, you know, like you're going to have to talk city hall. I'm just doing my job, but you, you go talk to the salvage yard owner. And and then like, you know, we like hand over the salvage truck to them. I mean, there's all sorts of little ways we can do something like that. It I makes it hard for the contact to drive the vehicle away. If it's on a salvage truck, they can drive the salvage truck. Uh, assuming they know how to drive a salvage truck. The job was he takes possession of the vehicle that they okay, provide you and drives it away. Uh, okay, if you wish to... Any objections to this? Okay, forget, forget, forget. I mean, if you wish to improvise without letting them know, that's up to you guys. I'm just saying what they said and what their plan was. Yeah, I think... I I don't think that plan is like a... I, I don't think... Honestly, I don't think that plan we should consider it. I don't. I really don't. 
Yeah, sorry. Of what I heard of it, it sounded a little overly complicated than what we need to do. Yeah. Drive around, have them follow us, eventually lose them. Really, and even, I mean, with this, with what we know about these guards, what I've seen, what knowledge we have, they, I mean, they have 12 on site, which, I mean, you have to leave some people on site, so those that follow us are not going to be that many. They're not heavily armed. They're not heavily armored. So, I mean, even if they do somehow catch up with us and we get into a fight with them, we will easily mow them down. But plan is, I think, lose them in the winding streets of Tivoli. Like, that sounds like a that sounds like a good means of doing it. We could also if that doesn't work, we could lose them on the highway. I mean, it's a more straightaway, so would that be speed versus handling? But or or pulling off in one of the other sit- towns and losing them in one of the other towns, which yeah, is also yeah. a possibility. Security response condition of the uh, city police or whoever is doing it for the city. Uh, okay, not a bad idea to double check the what the uh, what the uh, city has for um for uh, for police or whatever it is that they they do there. That's that's a good idea to check on. Hmm. It's a small town, so you know. But um, it's possible the uh, the company might call in local help to to help them out. Mm. How do you wish to investigate this, Solomon? But I mean, it should be easy to check in just public records about you know average size of the police force or whatever. It probably isn't that. I, I would imagine that's fairly public, and maybe a few articles about things that they might have done just to give us a feel for what their background is, you know, and have they had to deal with a lot of things or is it fairly, you know, quiet, nobody, you know, the occasional break in or something they have to deal with, but nothing really major. How small is this town we're talking about? Like rough uh, population size? Like how small are we talking? I have sort of distorted views of small towns. My mom lives in a town of 300 people. And I think the town I live in is like six with the world's largest casino in it. Uh, Which, let's see here. Yeah. So. Solomon can get you that information, or you can do a very easy matrix search. The current population of Tivoli is about 70,000 people. Okay. So they're going to have a proper police force. Yeah. Yeah, they are. That's about the size of my hometown. Yeah, I was about to say, 70,000. Okay, that's a, that's a fairly decent size. Okay. And that encompasses... Um, what is this like seventy square kilometers around it as well, not the city proper. Okay. Or not the center. Where the facility is is like right in the center of the city. It stretches out pretty far. Okay. So things I will note, uh, to be careful not to stay in town very long to where they are getting that kind of backup. Mm-hmm. So if we have to lose them in the next town, that might be a better option. If uh, if it, if it looks like they're going to be able to call in on help, you know. Well, okay. So, um, if you want, I can re-roll my uh, security. Uh, does uh, that would be more procedures? But would you allow me to substitute a security design for you know? Would a company like this there? Would they call for outside support? Would they call on the local uh, police force? Um, I don't know if there's really a precedent. You know how many guards they have. Oh, the company that the the guard van was the only marked security van is Shadowstone Security. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. How big is the question? Yeah. Can we check into them? How big of a company is it? I mean, it should be simple. That search will on take them. somebody doing a matrix search. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, Requires, like, some sort of computer skills, right? Yes. Or just a high enough logic, which I do not have. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, we could get, I mean, we could message Solomon and go, hey, do you know this security uh, company? I have, I have, a, I have, I have some computer skills. I can try it. See right. what I get. Uh, oh, one success. They exist. Yes, they, they do <laughs> exist. <laughs> um, they are. Located throughout um, Italy itself and a few neighboring countries, they are not uh, they're not huge. They are a corporation. Uh, they are not even an A corporation, an A-rated corporation. They're more like a C-rated corporation. 
so their resources to bring to bear are not uh, overwhelming in that case. Um, by basic okay. ratings of that size corporation, they might have more people in the area that they could call on in an emergency, um, but most of the, anything they bring in specifically for a job will have to actually be purposefully assembled for a job. It's not like Knight Errant, which at any given time in a city has dozens, if not hundreds of people that they could call in within an hour's notice. Gotcha. So they, they might have another another extra van of people or something like that possibly to call in, but you're not looking at like an army of people kind of thing. Right. Okay, fair enough. So so there could is a slight out, chance. I mean, could we find out more detail on, like, would they call in whatever local security there is? Oh. Um, like, if they have a disclaimer on, you know, how to hire them, like, we work in tandem with local security or something like that. Um, let's see. Would corporate security as a knowledge skill work for that? Um. In general, yes. Uh, while they are on contract at, on location or dealing specifically with property from one of their contractors, they will have authority, but they do not have extraterritoriality. So they probably will work with local authorities if they have to. Okay. Right. So it's possible they'll call in authorities. Gotcha. Yes. Especially if it's going to range much further than... Um, a kilometer or two away from the property. They might have to deal with getting jurisdiction from places they go to, depending on where they go. Right. Oh, God, I just had a horrible idea. Okay. But it, 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 it's not necessary on this job. I was just thinking, like, they're not extraterritorial. I mean, if we find somewhere that is... Uh. <laughs> they have... They, they <laughs> But no, it's not, it's not at all necessary with these guys. Yeah. Um, that's fair. So if we basically if we end up spending too much time here, they're probably going to call in reinforcements. If we spend, I, if we go outside of here and they're still following us, it's a possibility of calling in, definitely calling in more uh, outside or local help. Yeah, I definitely suggest we attempt to lose them in Tivoli before we yeah. get too far away. So. Yeah, I think so too. And probably you only want to spend no, no more than an hour in Tivoli going around the seats. Probably probably less than an hour. Imagine half an hour of them following us should be more than enough. I mean, they didn't give us a time limit. I'm not really sure the reasoning for that, but yeah, that's a that's a little weird to me as well. I mean, especially without giving us a time limit. Like, is there something they wanted to do during that time period? Maybe they needed to pull the guards away, and we're just the distraction. Well, but, and see, the the thing is, I do remember the mentioning, and I. I don't know if I put it in my notes, but I do remember them mentioning that the, I think the prototype and everything, they were showcasing it or something on the 30th, which is why we needed to get it done before then. Right. So I know that, but I don't, I don't, I don't get the emphasis on being followed personally at the moment and what, what knowledge we have, but yeah, you know. Maybe it needs to be public, meaning that they by by doing that, maybe they're hoping they would call in uh, outside support and then they'll have to make some sort of report. I mean, they'll probably have to make a report anyway, but, you know. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> if it's all done in-house, if we go in and steal it and nobody gets hurt and nobody knows anything about it, they could try to cover it up and be done well, with yeah. it, you know? That's the, uh, yeah, and that, that makes sense. All right. So create a scene outside the city, in the city itself, and then uh, that might have that might be a case. So that might be, that's the one thing I can think of. All right, well. Can you tell us if the security company has any kind of astral security presence? Because that could be a, a huge problem. I don't know if I got anything like that with my one. Call Solomon? I'm, I'm assuming I did not get anything with, with my look, right? No. Fair enough. Um, or like air support? I doubt yeah. we'll be looking at air support with how small the station it is. I mean, they might have a mage or so, you know, or or two possibly on, on, on oh, yeah. staff as... You know, that's it's possible there might be a spirit or two that that also searches. Um, sadly, I have no way of checking that. Uh, with a like a C-rated security corporation, they probably do have a few mages on staff that they could call in for an emergency. They probably don't have a mage on property. 
unless they paid really well for it. Yeah, I mean, if the company is paying them well, they might put one of their mages on property. But with somebody that does shift change and has something like that, they probably don't have a mage 24 hours a day. It, if they mm. do have a mage, it would be at whatever they consider peak times. Uh, most likely, they will have a mage available to do uh, an astral check upon emergency that may be able to find something and or send spirit help. Right. They'll, they might be more for tracking down whoever did it and not necessarily stopping them. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. So if we were careful not to leave a bunch of astral signatures around, we should be safe. Well, I am an astral beacon. Well, like I said, don't leave yourself lying around. (laughs) The Topps Company, Inc. has sole ownership of the names, logos, artwork, marks, photographs, sounds, audio, video, and or any proprietary material used in connection with the game Shadowrun. The Topps Company, Inc. has given permission to Relative Dimension to use such names, logos, artwork, marks, and or any proprietary materials for promotional and informational purposes on its website, but does not endorse and is not affiliated with Relative Dimension in any official capacity whatsoever. Relative Dimension is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial 4.0 International License. You can share us but please give us credit. The intro is church music from Sirenscape. The outro is Double Cross, off the Shadowrun Return soundtrack, used with permission from Harebrain Schemes. And thank you to Sirenscape for the additional music and sound effects. You can find more information at sirenscape.com. If you would like to get in touch with the Relative Dimension, you can visit our website at relativedimension.com. You can contact us, email at podcast at relativedimension.com. You can visit our Facebook at facebook.com slash relativedimensionpodcast. You can check us out on Twitter at relativedpod. You can check out our Patreon if you wish to support us at patreon.com slash relativedimension. 